Hi, this is Walford Kaufman, the pastor of Southside Baptist Church of Gaffney, South Carolina. And this is our teaching ministry. And this is what we used to do on Wednesday nights as we're working through the book of Romans. So get your Bibles ready and notepad, Romans, the sixth chapter. An unusual thing happened at a nursing home facility in Canada many years ago. One of the residents passed away. And so there they called the authorities. They had to go through the coroner who had to come pick up the body and then take it to a morgue and do all that before they released to a nursing home. Well, everything was going as supposed to be until they came to pick up the body. Well, those that uh, were responsible for picking up the body came in and those in the nursing home facility were very busy and they just said, in room so-and-so, you will find this particular person. So they went down there with their gurney and rolled in, first bed. There's a lady laying there. It looks like she's passed away. So they got her, put her on the gurney, rolled her out, put her there in that ambulance, and took her to the morgue. They rolled her out, <laughs> uh, got her out of the ambulance, and, and rolled her into the building and put her on the table there. Well, all this had happened, and then those back at the nursing home realized they made a mistake. They walked into the room, and the person who was dead was still there, and the person who was alive was gone. So they called down there to the morgue and said, please, please bring that woman back. They were able to get her back on that gurney, rolled her out to the ambulance, put her in the ambulance, drive her back to the nursing home, and... and <laughs> got her out of the ambulance and put her on that gurney, rolled her in back in the room, put her in the bed, and she never <laughs> woke up from that event. Uh, well, I guess she did eventually because she was alive. And they picked up the other lady and carried her to the morgue. What a strange thing to happen. We just got through celebrating Easter. Isn't that something? A great celebration. The Resurrection Sunday, the power and the new life. But I want to ask you something. If the spiritual transport, those came to pick up you today to carry you to heaven, will there be evidence that you're alive or are you dead? Will there be evidence that you're alive or you're dead? Let's pray. Father, as we journey into your word, we thank you that we are to be taught to live a life and live it to the fullest. And Lord, we have so much to celebrate. We're not to be laying around like we're dead. Yes, we're to be dead to this world, but not dead in you, Lord. And so teach us how to live this life. Lord, let us realize there's joy in dying to ourselves, dying to this world, and being raised anew in you. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, turning your Bibles there, that sixth chapter, let's look at verses 1 and 2 first. What, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Oh, by no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? And so the key here as believers, the key here as believers, uh, with Christ, we have died to sin. We are free from sin. We are separated from its powers in our lives. The only way that uh, power is able to take over is when we allow it to, when we let it, because see, Jesus has set us free. But the second thing that we see here in verse 3, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So baptized, and what it means here is to be dipped to be completely dipped, not just a one time in the water concept. Uh, this is the Greek concept of dying, to take red, I'm dying, not dying uh, in the grave, but I'm talking dying a color. That's what this concept comes from, is to take red dye and a white cloth, a pure white cloth, and you dip it in there and you leave it in there so long that every, every inch of that red dye covers that garment. So that white garment that went in, when it was dyed, it comes out, it's completely red. It's completely red. So that's what it means there to, to dip with Christ, to let Him saturate every part of our life. Our thoughts, our very being. See, Jesus died, we died. Jesus arose, we will arise one day. Thank goodness for that. And so now we see when you're dead, what can bother you? What can bother you? This is in verses 4 through 7. 
We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that we, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. And we see how glorious this is. So when you're dead... What can bother you? What can bother you? Uh, Reverend Philip Green died many years ago. Uh, excuse me, I got it wrong. Philip Green's father died uh, many years ago. And one, a thing happened with the family, a little fussing. The mother wanted to bury uh, his father, Philip Green's father, wanted to bury him in his pajamas and his bathrobe and her concept was well he just went to sleep and he's going to wake up one day it was kind of a sweet idea but the rest of the family thought that was the craziest things could be put him in pajamas and a bathrobe he was he was kind of a proud man uh, he was a true gentleman you never be caught in his pajamas and so the family had a little discussion about here's mama wanted pajamas the rest of the family wanted this but the rest of the family finally said why worry about it? Why worry about it? He'll never know, you know? He will never worry about it because when you're dead, you don't have to bother, <laughs> be bothered with things like that. Such is the way in our spiritual life. Such a way in our spiritual life. When we are dead in Christ, sin cannot bother us anymore. Uh, but, you know, that sounds good. I have to admit it. That sounds good. But we still sin, don't we? we still fall short. And so think about this. Uh, when we're dead in Christ, sin cannot bother us. But that, that's what we need to realize. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But what happens that's so wonderful is, is that when we, we fight Satan with God's power, not our power, See, Satan wants to play mind games with us. He will constantly be having us doubt and question, wor worrying about things like this. But if we have been dipped, if we've been dipped with Christ, saturated completely, uh, we're not going to worry about all these things of the world, are we? Not at all. So there, there's more uh, than just dying to the world. See, a lot of folks think, well, I'll end this. Let us realize with a relationship with the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ, we got so much going on for us. Look at verses 8 through 11. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, He cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over Him. The death He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life He lives, He lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Man, we have so much to celebrate here. So when you're alive to God, you receive His good and perfect will for your life. You like those two words? Good and perfect? See, dead to sin means alive to God and all that He has for us. I read about uh, a couple, Victor and Thelma Hayes. Uh, they won a lottery. That's right. They won a lottery uh, about seven million dollars that they were able to get. Seven million dollars. That's not bad for a couple that's been married 67 years. Now think about it. If they've been married 67 years and now they've won seven million dollars, oh, how old are they? Uh, they were both around 89 years of age. Well, of course, winning that kind of money, they were interviewed and uh, and both of them said, well, we really don't expect any major changes. I mean, 89 years of age, want all that money. What else can they do? Well, Victor, he was going to go out and buy a new car. Now, I have to admit, that kind of scares me. But he was going to buy, well, you know, if you got that kind of money, you can buy a new car and buy some, uh, or borrow somebody or pay somebody to drive it for you, be a, get a chauffeur. But that's what he wanted. And you know what uh, Miss Thelma wanted? All she wanted was a new pair of nylons. 
That tell you, she was kind of set in her ways, right? A new pair of nylons. The point in that illustration is when you accepted Christ as Savior, not only did you die to sin, but you have become alive in Christ. All that the Father has for us, all that the Father has for Jesus, He has for us. Think about it. All that God has for Jesus Christ, who's now, if we're a believer in Jesus Christ, we're co-heirs. And so think about it. What is for Jesus is also for us. And so we can rejoice in that. Uh, and you don't have to have any spiritual lottery winnings in this kind of situation. Uh, you don't have to worry about the, uh, you know, all that's going on. You've won that lottery. Think of the grace that we have. Think of the goodness that we have. Think of the blessings that we have from God. And you don't even have to buy a ticket. That's right. You don't even have to buy a ticket. It was already purchased for you on Calvary. When Jesus died on the cross, He purchased this life for us. But what have we done with these blessings? What would this good and perfect will for your life? Think about it. You have the good and perfect, not that we have to wait on it, not that we have to earn it. It's given to us, but what have we done with it? That's what uh, Paul is trying to get across here. You are blessed. You've been died to your old way. You've been set free and you're new, but what are you doing with this? Are you ready to move beyond your mediocre life? Um, I was reading something uh, just last night, and it was talking about it, it seems like uh, past 20 or 30 years, we have just learned how to live a mediocre life. People are not setting goals. People are not desiring a better life. People are so comfortable just like they are. And has that happened to us spiritually? What about you? Well, I'm saved. Praise God you're saved. But are you growing in grace? Are you growing in knowledge? Uh, you, so you really need to consider this next point here. When you're dead, when you're dead in Christ, you have become a saint. A saint. Now, I'm only a few blocks up from Limestone, now University, Limestone University, and their mascot is a saint. St. Bernard, that's the dog running around, but they're called the Limestone Saints. And so I know i got some saints uh, running around this place here, but I'm looking at this saint spiritually in life. Now, please realize this. Uh, now, saint does not mean perfection. Saint does not mean perfection. What it does mean is holy one. Holy one. And what that means is you've been separated. Um, it's kind of like this hand sanitizer on the table here. Okay, this is a, just a regular old uh, hand sanitizer, and it's there and all this. But I'm going to say, I'm going to set this to the side, and that's going to be used just for this particular purpose. I've set it aside. It's not changed any. It's the same as it was over here. But that's like taking our lives. I'm a saint. Okay, I'm a saint. But now I want to dedicate myself to the Lord. I want to be used by Him completely. I know we want to be used by the things of this world. That's what it means here. It's not perfection, but you've been separated. Separated from sin unto God. Separated from sin unto God. That's the key. It's dedicating it to the Lord. If you want to live in a resurrection power, if you want to truly become dead to the world, if you want to experience God's will for your life, you've got to die to this world. And so question now we have, how do I become dead to this world? Well, it's very simple. Commit yourself to the Lord. Dedicate yourself to the Lord. Totally surrender everything to the Lord. See, here's the wonderful thing about it. God wants us to use us to build His kingdom. To build His kingdom. That's how wonderful... I mean, just think, we're instruments of God. I mean, a shovel is a shovel. It's very simple. A, 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 a rake is just a rake. But put it in the right hands, and the work it can be done, that's what we're doing. We're simple. We're not perfect. But when we dedicate ourselves, say, Lord, take us and use us. 
That's what we're to be doing today. And then we see that we're to live free of rules. Hallelujah. We don't have to worry about these rules and guidelines, but be guided by love. Be guided by love. Oh man, I got rid of the rules, but my rule now is love God with all my heart. And then what? Love others. That's what I'm called to do. A uh, mother shared about experience in teaching her two-year-old child. Uh, she called her da daughter and said, uh, Honey, have you seen my slippers? And the uh, little girl said, Yes, Mama. They're downstairs in the kitchen. So what are, what are they doing? What are they doing uh, down there? And she said, the little girl said, Nothing. Strange, isn't it? Mama's asking a little girl, where's my slipper? The little girl said they're down in the kitchen. And the mother says, what are they doing? And so the, <laughs> the child says nothing. And then the little girl went on to say this, teaching something to the mama. Uh, they can't walk because they don't have any feet in them right now. They don't have any feet in them. And the mother said, that's a wonderful way to say it because we cannot walk where God uh, we cannot walk where God wants us to unless God's in control. We cannot do the things God wants us to do. We cannot do anything unless God is doing it through us. Slippers without feet in them, not very good. Huh? Not going to go very far. Our lives are not going to go very far. We're not going to do what we're supposed to until God is in control. So, as we're wrapping this up, we can still have some verses I want you to look through. Uh, two unusual questions. Are you a slave to sin? Or are you a slave to God? Hmm? You know, are you a slave to sin? Or are you a slave to God? You're one or the other. Yeah, oh, I'm, a, I'm an independent person. Well, that means you're a slave to sin. But when you say, I want to follow the Lord, look at the blessing. You're dying to the old, but being raised to the new. Oh, how wonderful that is. But we're going to walk through this very quickly some verses, and this will be a good time for you to make notes. What are some blessings that we see here that we can talk about? Uh, verse 15, What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have become, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefits did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads, leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. We always hear that, don't we? But the rest of it, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ Jesus our Lord, we have the gift of God. And so think about it. Eternal life, that's a free gift. Have you accepted it? And if you've accepted it, what have you done with it? A gift like that is to be shared with others. And so today, are you loving others? Are you caring for others? Are you ministering to others? So use that verse uh, there for the what? The gift of God's eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Go share that good news. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day that you've given us this eternal life, this gift of eternal life. Let us treat it like a precious gift. Let us honor it. Let us live it out. Let us share it with others. Thank you what you're going to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, may the Lord bless you and look forward to another teaching time next week.